Ladies and gentlemen, no variations there upon. This is the material that I've been whining about not having for a while. Now, this wool I ordered at the end of November only arrived a couple of weeks ago. You might have seen it in the background of some of my most recent videos. And as you can see, well, as you probably can't see because you can't see the bottom, but it goes all the way down and it's wrapped all the way around. So it clearly looks like there's enough material there with enough extra at the back in order to create a hood. So it looks like there's enough material there for me to create a Lord of the Rings style cloak, which is my intention. However, the guides that I've looked up for how to make it say it needs about three to five meters of material, meters being yards if you're American. Um, this is only two meters because wool is expensive. So I only brought two meters of it. I do have a green cotton lining material that I'm also going to use. And that's also two meters. So when it comes to using this, I've not got much wiggle room with it. So I'm going to have to use it as sparingly as I can, uh, try and be as efficient as possible and <laughs> use basically all the material I've got, I think, in order to try and create this. I've only got a couple of days to do it. So let's just crack on. So without further ado, floor goblin mode, activate. Mm. <laughs> So the reason I've pinned all this out is that the, as you can probably tell, the wool and the cotton are not exactly the same size. In fact, I think when I pre-washed the wool, it's shrunken evenly, so one side is slightly shorter than the other. But anyway, the reason I've pinned them together now is so that we know what anything we draw on top is going to have two pieces of fabric of the same size. So I don't need to worry about drawing out the pattern piece on one, cutting it out, and then coming to draw it on the other one and realizing I don't have enough of that material because it one was wider than the other. And because they're pre-washed, hopefully shouldn't shrink anymore. If they do, it should be minimal. So tape measure ready. Let's get the trailer's chalk and mark out exactly where we're going to cut. To avoid putting a hole in my measuring tape, what I've decided to do instead is to measure out a length of string and I'm using that to measure the length of the cloak. As for the length you need to measure out, we need to make sure it's as long as the cloak is going to be against our body, plus the length that you're going to cut out for the neck hole. Okay, so this is what I've got. Um, I've only marked this roughly on with the tailor's chalk because I want to get an idea of how it's going to fit. And as you can see, it looks like the two cloak panels are going to fit on. The issue is when it comes to the hood, this is a hood I've mocked up and it's not quite fitting on. Now, I did leave a little bit of extra room so it's got an overhang at the front, um, which technically I could do away with, but I even taking that out, I don't think I'm gonna have enough. Um, but this material down here in this area is going to be scrap anyway if I don't do the hood so I might as well cut out the cloak panels which are under there cut out these two cloak panels and then I'll just see what kind of hood I can make out of this section if I can't make a good hood then it's just going to be a case of I'll have to order another half meter of the material of each of the materials which is annoying as I'll have to wait for it before I can finish it and upload the video, but it might be what I have to do. So let's mark these out in more permanent straighter lines and then I'll get to cutting. I then began pinning along the lines I was going to cut in order to make sure that the panels don't move around as I cut it out. But 
then I notice something. So here's where I stand with this. You see, when I was, what I said earlier about, it looks like the wall shrunk unevenly because one end was overhanging and one end wasn't. It wasn't that the wall had shrunk. At least I don't think it has. At least not unevenly. I, I think I've pinned it wrong. When I pin the two pieces together to make sure that they, um, when I cut them out, they're gonna be exactly the same. And when, when I've been pinning around the outside of the line that I'm going to cut, uh, I've noticed that this end is bunching up and I think it's because this end's overhanging, that end's not, or well, that end's not, that end's overhanging there. So I believe I've skewed the uh, lining material on top, which means if I cut it out now, the lining material is gonna have either be too large strip there going to be extra something like that or the wall that's underneath is going to be cut too short which means i'll have to take out every single pin and repin it all and after my last sewing project didn't work out it's really knocked my confidence with it so i'm determined to try and get this right get it done right and with the hood not working as well it's a part of me that just wants to go, let's just forget about doing this project now. Make, make videos about other things, something simple. So the question is now, what do I do? Do I leave it? Do I persevere, try and get this done, risk messing it up and knocking my confidence again, try and find a different use for the wall? Overall, I'm gonna to have to unpin this now. It's gonna be a long job. And the sun's already setting. Let's just keep buggering on, as Churchill used to say. If you're dealing with a lot of pins, be sure to keep some magnets handy. So it's the next day and I've had a little while to think about this and I've rearranged some things. Obviously I've pinned the um, fabric better to the wall. The issue I was having I think is I'm being overly cautious. Because my last project didn't work out the way I intended and it not my confidence, I was trying to get everything perfect and it's never going to happen. So. I've just pinned around the outside of everything I'm going to cut rather than trying to pin the whole thing down. So I know all the bits I'm going to cut are lining material over wool. The panels for the actual cloak are slightly shorter. They're not quite as long. They're going to come slightly hard up my leg. Not that much. I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. But the hood I've changed up a little bit in that I've... Um, what I was planning on doing is making one solid piece that I can arrange. Um, so that we have a large pointed hood. So what I've done instead is I've broken it up into two pieces because the more you can break something up into smaller and smaller parts, the easier it is to fit into all the different spaces you've got left over, the more efficient you can be with your material. And I've taken off the point. I've done it more rounded. So it's gonna be more like a Jedi hood, I think, than a medieval looking one. My attitude now isn't gonna be cautious, cautious, cautious. It's gonna be, let's just do something. <laughs> Let's just work with it and try and see what we can do with what we've got. So, just going to be a case of cut out now and, you know, move on. The first thing we need to do is to sew the panels together, both of the cloak and of the hood. Here I'm doing the hood and it's the outside. What we need to do is to place the fabric right sides together. This fabric doesn't really have a right side and a wrong side, but if yours does, place it right sides together and then sew the panels together, ensuring that you can leave enough room for about a one centimetre seam allowance, or possibly two, depending on how much material you had. After sewing the panels together, the next thing to do is to pin the lining and the outside together. And then sew as we did before around the outside, but leaving the side that will make up the neck open so that we can turn it the right way around afterwards. We 
We essentially do the same thing with the cloak itself. We sew the panels together, then pin the lining to the outer layer. Then we sew them together, starting at the neck and moving around the outside until we reach the neck on the other side. When we come to a corner, make sure that the needle is all the way down, raise up the foot and spin the material around 90 degrees, then keep going. So I've sewn up around the outside of most of the cloak. All that's left now is to attach the hood and do the turn. Now I've been thinking about how best to attach the hood because the key things I need to do is keep the seams hidden and try and do as much of it by machine as I can just for speed sake. I do like hand sewing but I don't really want to spend hours doing it. What I've done is I've trimmed the, this back because as I said uh, the hoods were sitting a bit high so I've cut actually a fair amount of material off and lowered the hood down. Here's something that's happened and I don't know why. Even though I cut these out of the same material at the same time, the lining is considerably shorter than the wool. No idea why that's happened, but it has. Um, but that's left a, a lot of extra wool on the hood. This is the hood section here, a lot of extra wool. So what I'm going to do is attach the wool of the hood to the wool of the cloak, like so. So it's a bi-layer like that. Sew along there and then when I turn it inside out that will be hidden on the inside. Then all that's left is to attach the lining to the other part of the lining and that's the bit I'll have to do by hand. And now for the turn. Let's start with the hood, because that's easy. You can find something long to poke into the corners to get it to turn. But that's it turned. All I've got to do now is uh, sew up by hand the final seam on the hood. Uh, which if I could find my little scissors, I would start doing so I don't want to be cutting thread with my massive shears um, Around here somewhere To seamlessly connect the hood to the cloak first we need to press two distinct folds along the seam Then we need to pass the needle along the inside of one of these folds and poke it out the apex Then pass the needle directly over to the apex of the other fold and pass it through to the inside. When you pull the thread taut, assuming you've knotted the end, you'll end up pulling the threads together so that the seam line is invisible. If you do this repeatedly along the seam, then you'll end up with a seam line that is invisible, hence the name Invisible Stitch. And there we have it, a fantasy cloak that's uh, lined and with a hood. Now there are a few things that I'd change with it, but overall, considering this is my first major sewing project, I think it's done quite well. The clasp is a bit uneven, as you can, might be able to see, but that's only temporary. I'm going to replace that with a leaf lorin. Once I've worked out exactly how I'm going to make it and attach it. One thing I did take away from this is when I first started creating it on that first day, I spent so long trying to make sure that I was going to cut it out correctly that I almost lost heart and didn't continue or got frustrated and wanted to buy more material. Now, I think what I've learned from this project is I just need to have more confidence in it. It's very daunting when you come to that first cut and you're not sure because it feels very permanent when you do that cut. But if you have the confidence in yourself and your own abilities and just make the start on it, the chances are it's either going to go well or you, you know you live with it and you learn from it. So 
How does it function? Well, it's warm, it's very comfy. The hood fits and comes over so as to make me look rather mysterious with the uh, overhang at the front. So overall, I don't think I've done that bad a job. I do feel like if I were to do that look up to the stars that they do in Skyrim when you level up, I've definitely put an extra couple of points into sewing. Uh, maybe once I've leveled up, I'll get the extra perk, but I haven't got that yet. So I'm on my way, I'm getting there. Now I've got a few more sewing projects coming up. Uh, some of them are going to be Star Wars based, some of them Avengers based, some of them fantasy based. So if you're in that to that sort of nerd culture and you want to do some sewing, some cosplay, then uh, give us a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.